Hello, welcome to Tom's Messian Vlog, episode 8. Um, it's sort of actually episode 7.5 or episode 7b. Uh, why? Well, I was actually going to talk to you today about, as I have done in some previous episodes, about one particular issue. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about musical freedom, uh, an approach to Messian's very precisely notated rhythms and silences. Um, and I even had some recommended reading prepared for you, uh, some homework. Anyway, I'm going to roll that over to next week, and I just wanted to share a couple of things with you um, this week, uh, a couple of smaller things. So, first thing, I said it was episode 7.5 or 7b. That's because I watched episode 7, uh, which I recorded previously, and maybe you've already seen. Uh, and I was watching myself play, the bits where I'm playing, and I move around a lot, so much when I'm playing. Now I know I do that, I've always done it, um, and, and it's not like I haven't seen footage of myself doing it in the past as well, I, I, I roll around while I'm playing, and if just cast your mind back to episode 6 I think it was, I was talking about how I prepare for performance as opposed to the mere technical work of learning the notes, how I sort of make the leap into performance mode, and I was talking about how I sing while I play and all that sort of stuff, well I also move while I play, not necessarily deliberately, but um, just what it, I mean, is 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 it's involuntary. I I just respond to the music in that way, and uh, no, how how sweet, how lovely. Thing is, it can get in the way technically if I'm not careful. I mean, it's not like I'm thrashing around like a loon, is it? But nevertheless, um, it's a natural part of my playing. I don't want to suppress it exactly, but like I say, sometimes I move around a bit too much, and I really noticed that watching episode seven. So you know what? Watching my own vlog, I learned something, and I thought, you know what, I need to do some work on sitting still in this piece. That's a stage I often go through in preparing new music, particularly stuff that is difficult or that I'm particularly emotionally involved with. I'll find I'll move around quite a lot, and I need to do some practice where I deliberately sit still while I play. So uh, that is some work that I'm going to be doing over the next couple of weeks, some sitting still practice. All right, so that's the episode 7.5 thing. Uh, also, I talked uh, about episode uh, episode seven, uh, movement seven of of the Livre de Saint Sacrement. Oh gosh, several episodes ago, I took you on a little guided tour of the piece, uh, and I've just been uh, looking at some details in it. Um, well, sort of consistently uh, since then, uh, but there are a couple of things which um, which are worthy of a little bit of attention in a vlog post, perhaps, just briefly. So I mentioned, um, if you remember, uh, there are some chords, some sort of shapes, uh, where you have G-sharp and F-sharp, this is an example of one of them, G-sharp and F-sharp together, uh, oh, I need some stops out, uh, then D-sharp and C-sharp together, then A and B, and then goes up the octave, okay? And you have finger five and four, and then fingers three and two, then the thumb across the A and the B, and then five and four at the top. The thing I found, um, it's very easy in context, and when I play this whole phrase to you in a minute, I bet I'll do it, because I haven't quite eradicated the problem yet, and I'm tired at the moment, so I pr probably have recorded this vlog this morning, but anyway. Um, uh, I, I, can fi I find sometimes I slightly lose control, and I end up playing in slow motion something that's rather than this, or, you know, later on there's another one. Uh, I find instead I play... Uh, sort of, or in other words, the chords aren't quite together when they're supposed to be. Uh, so I need to do more work on that. And I found that the, the, the way to get it accurate uh, involves a number of things. Um, playing very flat fingered, unusually flat fingered. I mean, it, it's it's almost disconcerting. It's like, well, this is exactly what my piano teacher told me precisely not to do when I was five. And um, so there's that. And uh, also just thinking about where the weight falls in my hand. Uh, I need to think about the centre of gravity in my hand to try and get that right. Anyway, that's a process that's ongoing. The other thing uh, is every, in this particular passage, page 50 of the Livre de Saint Sacrement, every single chord in the first three lines has some sort of articulation marking, a tenuto mark, or um, a slur over a pair or a group of chords, and then a marcato or something like that. You're told how to play every single, um, every single chord. So if I ignore that, by the way, did you just hear that? The sharp-eared amongst you would have heard me do that, so that, you know, like I say, it needs a bit of work. Anyway, that's without any of the articulation markings. Now listen to the difference I think it can make if you actually do what Messian asks. Thank you. 
I just think it's got more character. I, again, I'm taking a risk here because I might listen back to it and think, uh, maybe it doesn't actually, Tom. Uh, but I think it does. Um, it just lends more sort of shape to it. So it, it's, I just want to make the point, it's so worth taking notice of these things. You know, you can get so wound up sort of trying to get the notes into your head or whatever, um, you can completely disregard these things. But he marks something on every single chord, as I've said. So I'm trying to be faithful to that. So that's my thought for the end of this week. Anyway, uh, tune in next time for episode nine and a discussion on the freedom in music making. <laughs> <laughs>